Uh, it's wonderful to see such a great turnout tonight to celebrate our community. I can't think of a better way of doing this tonight than being fortunate enough to hear from our lineup of great, gifted speakers and the range of topics and messages that will touch us all. Our first speaker, Sydney, has a true best friend named Claire. Claire's impact on Sydney has been tremendous. Claire is now happily married to Kyle, and tonight we will be wishing the best while hearing a toast by Sydney to her best friend. It is my pleasure to introduce Sydney Newberry. I would like to welcome you all and thank you for coming to help celebrate the marriage of Claire and Kyle. To my best friend Claire and to her husband Kyle as they're about to start an exciting new chapter in their life. As most of you know, Claire has been a special part of my life and I've seen the love and affection she has had towards, towards Kyle. From meeting you, to seeing your relationship grow with Kyle, to now getting to create a future together, I can't wait to see what, what life has in store for you too. So starting off, me and Claire met on mycollegeroomie.com this summer of 2018. We started talking online about our likes and dislikes, and then she told me that she knew what high school I went to, but the funny thing was I never told her which high school I actually went to. And she brought out to me that she stalked every one of my social medias just to see who I was, and it kind of freaked me out a little bit. And then it ended up being we were roommates freshman year in college, and we took adventures everywhere together. The most interesting adventure we took was we were coming back from a party one night, and Claire found a headlight on the side of the road, a car headlight. And I, she was like, oh, we should take it back to our dorm. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do with the car headlight? And we ended up having every single person on our floor sign the car headlight, so we will always have that as a memory, I guess. And then that just led into constant movie nights every night, um, to playing Mario Kart out in our lounge with everyone on our floor, and then to playing tag around the loop of our floor, the uh, building we were in. We have laughed and we have cried. We have laughed until we cried. We have picked each other up when each other is down, emotionally and physically. We have bickered and we have screamed, but most of all, we have loved. From my roommate to my best friend, and to now my, and to being your bridesmaid, I couldn't have done it without you. I cannot express the love everyone has in this room for you. It has been a joy to watch you grow and become the woman you are today. I would like to propose a toast. Here's to the groom with a bride so fair, and here's to a bride with a groom who is so rare. May the two of you live your lives to the fullest and never lose hope. Everyone, let's raise our glasses to congratulate them to the newest chapter in their life, to Kyle and to wishes to Kyle and Claire. As we celebrate our community, we must include and remember those no longer with us, but for such a part, an important part of our lives, of our community. The saying, the more you hurt, the more you love, comes to mind. Our next speaker will remind us of this as we hear a eulogy for her great-grandmother, Georgia Morella Kaufman. Well-spent time between loved ones will never be forgotten. Please give a gracious welcome to Lydia Kaufman. Well, hey, if any of you had spent any time at all with my great-grandmother, you would know that that is one of her most famous saints. I myself have heard it probably at least a thousand times. I may be exaggerating a little, but it surely felt like it. We are gathered here today for a time of mourning, but also a time of celebration for my great grandma, Georgia Morella Penrod Kaufman. I had spent many a day with her <coughs> learning the life lessons that she found to be most important. And today I want to reflect on the life that she had what she contributed to the community and the time that I got spent with her. She was born on February 22nd of 1918 on George Washington's birthday, which is why her first name is Georgia. Her father was a school teacher whose name was Ellis. And one of the things that he taught her, which she also taught me, was to write 
holding her pencil with the Palmer method. So, you don't hold the pencil like you normally do. Instead, you hold it real loosely and you write with your entire arm instead of from your wrist so that it would help with arthritis in your old age. She met my grandfather in high school and it's a funny story how they met. She had never missed a day of school in her life and one day she woke up with the moms. And so she put a scarf around her neck and she was like, well, I'm still going to go to school because I haven't ever missed a day. And so she um, went to school and my grandfather saw that her neck was swollen. And so he told the teacher, he said, her neck is swollen. I think that she has the mumps. And my grandma, um, the teacher came over and told my grandma to go home. And my grandma looked at him and said, Hanford, I'm going to marry you for that. And she did. She was married to him for over 60 years. After high school, she went on to learn how to be a nurse in Chicago. And whenever she got done with her nurse's training, she came back to her hometown of Dongola, Illinois, where she started a nurse clinic called the Rural Health Clinic. And there she impacted thousands of people's lives. She was also a very active member of her church. She helped with vacation Bible school dinners or just being there for people whenever they needed it most. Some of the life lessons that she taught me was cooking and sewing. I remember many times we would be in the kitchen and she'd be baking something and she would just let me get stuff out and start cooking whatever I wanted. Sometimes it didn't turn out right and other times it turned out pretty good. She, I also liked to walk up the hill with her in the orchard and we would go pick um, peaches, apples, pears, and then we'd bring them back to the house and we'd cut them up and we would eat them. She also taught me a lot about her faith in God. And um, one of the things that she did, she would take the $1 bill, and it has on the back of it, in God we trust. So she'd take it, and she'd fold it um, three ways, lengthwise, and then she'd take it, and she'd wrap it around, and it would show the letters, in God we trust. And every time we went and we visited her, whenever we were little, she would hand us the $1 bill, and it would all be folded up. And so that's probably my best memory that I have of her. Um, I also like to, well, we would do a lot of work outside. We would go in the flower garden and we would pick flowers. Uh, we'd go down to her basement area, which didn't have very good lighting, and it'd be all like creepy down there, and I'd get scared. And she'd be like, oh, it's okay. And she'd find all sorts of stuff that she had collected throughout the years. My great-grandmother is and will be greatly missed. She did a lot in her life that impacted the community. She instilled in me and several others life lessons, such as cooking, sewing, and sharing her faith. However, we can all rest assuredly that she lies with her Lord and Savior in heavenly home. And I look forward to the day that I will be reunited with her. speakers today, from new beginnings to cherished memories. It all fits into celebrating our community and our world. Thank you so much for being here tonight, and have safe travels. Goodbye.